Any answers to questions? Be my guest. How's it going? Do you want to answer a question? Oh, yeah, sure. stand over there. Do you like to hold this microphone? Oh, yeah, sure. Cool. Now, you stand back a little bit because we don't want to be too close. Yeah. Can you read any of those signs and answer a question? Um, how many ladies can you see? Is there one or two? I, I see one. Which one do you see? I see a woman looking off into the distance. Is she young or old? She's young. Okay. And if you were given a slightly little clue, you might see two women there. What? No, I can't see two women. Well, supposing that she has a necklace on her neck, right? But that necklace became someone's mouth. Oh! Oh, God! See? Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. Now, <laughs> it's cool, right? Yeah. And a lot of people don't see these things. I don't know if you're any good at maps. Oh, I'm hard at that. Okay, what about, um, how about this question here? What do you read there? God is nowhere. Well, some people read that and they say, God is nowhere. Yeah. Other people read it and go, God is now here. Which one oh. is it? Oh, God. It's either, it could be one or the other, it could be both. Yeah. Okay. And we've got all these other questions, like that one over there. But the thing is, okay, why am I doing this? Yeah. Okay, because I am doing a little bit of street preaching, giving people the gospel. Yeah. Okay, did you know that? Yeah. How did you know that? Um, I, heard, I saw the bell there and I kind of picked it up. Well, I mean, you can talk about God doesn't necessarily mean an awful lot. Right? Yeah. But what's your name? Uh, Jamie. Jamie, what age are you? I'm 16. 16, okay. Now, are you from here? Yeah. Right. If I was to ask you a few quick questions to see how you do, right? Yeah. Do you believe that there is a God? Yes. And how would you describe this God? A loving Father. Loving Father, okay. Creator of all things? Yeah. That, that God. The reason why I say it is because as I keep telling people, in Hinduism, if you were Hindu, there are 300 million gods. Yeah. Everything from the snail to the elephant, you know. So, are we talking about the same thing here? Yeah. Or the Creator who created everything, the real God? Yeah. Right. Okay, next question. Do you, Jamie, is it? Yes. Do you have a soul? Um, I believe I do. And what would that be? Um, I believe it's the energy God created us with. Like your personality? That yeah. Kind of thing? Okay. Do you think it lives after you die? Yes. And where do you think it goes? Into the afterlife with our Father. Oh, sounds like a little mix of new age, reincarnation, a bit of everything floating yeah. around there. Okay? <laughs> yeah. And can you know for sure where you're headed toward when you die? I think if you live a good moral life, you'll know. And do you think you've lived a good moral life? I hope so. I believe I have. Okay. What would you judge that by? I would judge it by how you treat your fellow men. <laughs> not all, not men being... Oh yeah, being universal. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. But there is a way where people think that they are good when they compare themselves with other people, yeah. but sometimes they don't compare themselves to a very high standard. Oh, yeah. Say, for example, I said to you, in the Bible, for example, there's a standard called the Ten Commandments. No, there are 613 laws in the Old Testament. Some yeah. of them apply to Jewish people on the way they dress, what the food they eat. But by and large, there's the Ten Commandments, which we are familiar with, right? Yeah. And it starts off by saying, you shall have only one God. Mm. Number two, don't make up gods. <laughs> Number three, don't blaspheme God's name. Number four, keep one day a week holy. Number five, honor your mother and father. Number yeah. six, do not murder. Number seven, don't commit adultery. Number eight, don't steal. Number nine, do not bear false witness, lying. And number ten, do not covet. Based on that standard, do you think you'd be a good person? I believe I would be. Yeah. So you've yeah. never, you've never put a, a, another god before God. No. You don't create gods in your own mind. Your own made-up mm -hmm. gods, even if it was a statue that you eventually made, but you just have it in your mind. And you've never used God's name as a swear word. No. You've never. Mm -hmm. You've always honored your mother and father. I try and, my best. Yes. Yeah. And uh, you haven't murdered. I no. No. And good job. But here's a, a something that Jesus said in the New Testament, by the way. He says, "You've heard that it was said, don't murder. <laughs> but I say to you that whoever has hatred in his heart towards somebody is a murderer in heart." I say the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so there you yeah. go. And somebody says, well, the Bible says don't commit adultery. Any sex outside of marriage. Yeah. But Jesus says whoever looks at a woman or man to lust yeah. after them has already committed adultery with them in his heart. I must leave now. Oh, Jamie. I well, seconds. I don't know if you've ever read any of the New Testament before. Yeah. Have you? I read the Old Testament. Well, here's something. John's Gospel, okay? I would encourage you to read that. Oh, wow. And if you'd like to be on YouTube, just say, yes, I would. 
because because we're recording stuff and it, I have a YouTube channel, okay, in Killarney Church. Our, our church is in Killarney, but we have a YouTube channel. You can check it on if you have a phone. I don't know, but you can check for Living Rock Church Killarney on YouTube, and you might see if we use your this material. Okay? Thank you for stopping. Okay, okay, thanks. Bye. Why did you say what you said earlier? Was it just for fun? Just silly comments. I know, I know, but why? I know, but what was your point, though? I'm what? I'm what? How do you know if you haven't talked to me? I ask, is that religion? What's religious about that? Well, is that a religious comment? Is that a religious comment? God is nowhere? Well, see, that's that's why I'm saying some people read things one way, some people the other way. That's, what's wrong with that? I'm not saying it's like. Okay, hear me out. Come closer. I can't hear you. So everyone has Can you take this microphone? No. I'm just to record. I'm just going to hear what you have to say. That's all. No, I just want to okay. have a conversation. Go ahead. Okay, so everyone has their own belief system, right? Yeah. And everyone can believe what they want, right? Mm, well, we can talk about that. Of course, one thing I don't get. Mm -hmm. All this here, yeah. especially that God is now here. It's Which it doesn't say. It could say God is, is nowhere. It could say that. Right. Yeah. People are allowed to have their own opinion, right? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, everything here is yeah. talking about God. Is it? Right. So what's that mass question about the living of God coming? Which one? What's what's that say about God? Yeah. So everyone has their own beliefs. Okay. So what's wrong with that? I'm saying everyone can believe their own things and can we, they can be grand, of course. What you're doing is forcing that people. How am I forcing it exactly? Do people walk past? I mean, is it my getting yeah. people going? <laughs> am I doing that? I don't mean like that. I mean, oh, what do you like mean? Just chatting about. Am it. I having a conversation? Is that showing? Down? Do you have conversations about Lego or computer games? Do you like have conversations? I force am I forcing anything on you? I mean, have no, I forced no, anything on so far in the country? No. From what okay. I've heard from friends that have been around here, you have been. From friends who have been around here? Yeah, that have been like here when you're here. Well, have you, you watched any of the videos? I've recorded a lot of it. I don't see anyone shoving. No, I've never seen the videos. If people, like some, one atheist, for example, he's an atheist, stood here for 45 minutes. I enjoyed the conversation. It was pouring rain. I wasn't complaining. Now, the only reason I have this conversation is because I want to hear what people's feedback is. I mean, if they told me you're shoving, that's the first time I've heard that now. So that's on record. This is the first time someone's told me you're shoving religion down our throat by asking questions. You're not allowed to ask questions. No, I'm not saying you're not allowed. I mean, it's like, it depends on how you go about it. Oh, how am I going about it? Well, from what I've heard, you've been going on. To Don't go by what you hear. Here. That's gossip, okay? Tell me, how are we going about this now? I mean, with this conversation, we're going about it pretty much early, I think. Fine. Fine. So you mentioned something earlier, and this is, um, I'm correct in saying this, you said everyone's entitled to their own beliefs. Yes. Would you, what would you think of this scenario? There's an African guy. He believes that if he throws his newborn child to the crocodiles, well, he'll get a good harvest that year. And is he, would you, would you question that? I would question it, but I wouldn't really bat an eye, like I said. You wouldn't bat an eye. You wouldn't, would you not care for the child at all? No, it's, I'm not saying it like that. I'm saying like, it's... I would. I would well, say, yeah, hey, would. mister, maybe you're not informed. Yeah, but that's, I'm saying like, I would question it, but like, if he feels it's his belief... Well, he's about to throw the baby in. Would you go, hold on a second. <laughs> or would you go, hey, look, everyone's in doubt their beliefs. I mean, that's I mean, seriously. It'd be kind of both, like. Yeah, that's it's what I'm saying. Like it depends if there's proof backing it up. What proof or what? Like, say, it's a ritual that's went around for like it 20 has, 30 years. And it has. And it's been proved that it's actually happened. And that's not just coincidence. Do you get me? Like, I know. Like, but seriously, how do you test? Or so like, let's see. Okay, try it this time then. And we'll, let's, we'll look for some evidence. I wouldn't. I think we should challenge that guy and say, Maybe you've been raised in a belief system which is incorrect. Have you ever thought about that? Why would doing that help you? What sort of a God are you believing in that would require that? I mean, to be fair, I'm not trying to have a go at like Christianity now. But with stuff that's happened, like, say, 
the Holocaust, mm-hmm. and the Germans, and the Rwandan Holocaust, like yeah. the whole title first. Yeah. All that just happened, and people have had God watching over them, and, so, and just leave it go instead of sending down blessings or anything like that. So, so I guess what you're saying is that what is the purpose or reason for suffering in the world? And if there is a God, why don't he do something about it? Yeah. Well, I suppose what you've recognized is a very common problem, which is true. There is suffering in this world, right? But if you were a, an atheist like, let's say, Richard Dawkins, he'd say, what do you expect? There's no, not that, that's, that's what you would expect in a world. But why, I would ra- raise questions like this, and I'd ask this to, you, I'm not saying you're an atheist, by the way. No, okay? I, I am actually, so you're going to mind. Okay. I was, I was very <laughs> Christian at a point. Like, okay. I was definitely Christian on Mass every Sunday. That's, we had, like, classes on that, that. Not necessarily Christian, you understand? Yeah, I know Let's say, like, for example, there are a lot of people today who identify as something that they were not born, like a different gender, right? Yeah. You understand? Now, people would argue back and forth and say, well, that's not true, okay? Well, what if someone says, I identify as a Christian because I go to Mass? And then there's the Jehovah's Witness. He, just, he identifies as a Christian. So does the Mormon. So does 200 other different sects of Christianity. But are they Christian because they identify as Christians? Or is there a definition given like the one in the Bible, a Christian is what? I was on a false course. You know what the false, false is? Yeah? The false course. And I mentioned to some women, Irish women, I became a Christian when I was 17 years of age. And they nearly had a heart attack. They said, what do you mean you became a Christian? We're all Christians. What do you, I said, what do you mean we're all Christians? How could we all be Christians? I guess the definition of Christians yeah. depends on the different sects. But in, let's say, Lutherism and, Pod- and Protestants, yeah. they believe in, uh, what's that thing? Um, the faith system where you just have to believe in God. Well, it's not yeah. just believing in God, but it's a starting point. Yeah. 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 I would be of that yeah. persuasion. Yeah. Catholics, you know, good deeds going to Yes, church. earn your way to heaven. Yeah. There, there's diff- there are differences in kind of how you would kind of be a Christian in each different sector yes. of Christianity. Yeah. Like it changes from Orthodox to Lutheranism, everything. So are they all right? Can't, I, I have a problem with that. They, when can, it, they, they can't be all right, but they can't be all wrong. Okay, the, do, the one reason why I do the Mavs question, by the way, right, is to point out when people get the question wrong and yet they're convinced that they're right, can there be more than one right answer to the question, right? Now, when it comes to Mavs, there's not like, oh, whatever you think is right, right? But when it comes to mathematics, there's only one correct answer, okay? Now, if Christianity has one particular root. Now, you, I don't know if you've seen Oprah Winfrey where she says, there are many ways to God. And somebody in the audience says, well, that can't be right. If Jesus says, I am the way, then if he said that, then that's incompatible with everything else. Right? So it's either he's right and he's the biz, biggest bigot that he thinks he's the only way, or he's, at, he's, or, or he's, or he's completely wrong. Right? Which one is it? So if these people can all define for you what we Christians, whatever I think it is, then you're going to have no uh, concrete definites at all. And what we want to know is how can we know for sure what is the truth? Okay, I got a, 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 a Quran in my bag there as well because I talk to Muslims. I read, I read through the Quran not because I'm trying to find answers, but to see what way do these people think, right? And uh, yet you ask the Muslim, he hasn't read the Bible. He's, he's told he shouldn't read it. And it's not good for him to read it. I said, well, why don't you read it and find out for yourself? You know what I mean? What's wrong with that? Most people haven't even read the Bible, yet they've got an opinion on it. Like, for example, yourself. You said you were raised in a kind of pseudo-Christian, or what you believe to be Christian, yeah? I, I was very Christian. Like, I, was, I grew up in a household where we strictly followed like everything that was said in the Bible. If you get what I mean, I'm not the best part of but like we strictly followed everything like we would go to mass every sunday we would be and we would do this we would do that but the thing is what happened that really changed that for me is this is the person i know my mother yeah like she fell in dublin three years ago so i was like if this is real, why wouldn't God have much of a sense of it? Because we were firm believers, we follow his exact word. Okay. So why would he do such? I would of- like to respond to a couple of things there. Number one, you were a Catholic, Roman Catholic, right? 
No, I'm, I'm not too sure. I can't fully remember. But like, Most likely, by signs of things, life. okay? And that not, doesn't mean that you were Christian, okay? But you followed to the best of your knowledge, okay? What you thought was right. And there will be suffering in this world. And, you know, let's say, for example, if I saw a brand new car, Rich, right out, straight out of the factory, all smashed up, I wouldn't jump to the conclusion, these, this company makes smashed up cars, would I? I'd say something has to have happened by the time it, from the time it left the factory to not, right? When you see the world around you, you can see something's not right. There is suffering. There is trouble. Okay? Is that the way God created it at the beginning with? No. Something has gone wrong. And it's not that God doesn't know that it was going to go wrong or what was going to happen, but there's a purpose. And there's a God who is guiding people. There are people, in, you mentioned the, the, the uh, concentration camps, right? There are people who, there, there were people who were in those concentration camps who were believers. And they said, we could see God with us even then. In fact, have you heard, have you heard of Corrie Ten Boom? She was a Dutch woman. They were hidden, hiding Jewish people in their houses, right? She thanked God for the lice that was in their particular hut because, hey, the, the German Nazi officers don't come in here because there are lice. Aren't we blessed to have lice? I mean, they, they saw something, even in the worst situations, they were able to find something good in that. Okay? And when, when there's no God, suffering is pointless. But when there is God, even the things that seem to be terrible, we can say there may be, I don't know it right now, a purpose behind all of this. Okay? Some people say, I don't understand why this happened. I mean, I've, I've listened to loads of testimonies. There's a guy up north, um, Philip Nolan, he does a TV show, and he's questioning Christians. Some people talked about all the wonderful things. Oh. Others talked about the suffering they went through. He was more convinced by the ones who went through suffering than the ones who talked about their wonderful experiences. Because when you face trouble and suffering, it can either drive you to God or from God. It can really test your faith. Okay? And if we believe that God is overall watching, organizing things in our lives, then it's not for no purpose. Okay? I think things like one of my favorite, I don't want to take all your time, right? But one of my favorite stories would be the people who were going on a holiday of their lifetime. And what happened? They were late. They missed the train or whatever they had to get on. They missed it. They were late. They were blaming each other. It's all your fault. Where's the passports? But when they saw that boat sail away and they went, oh, we've missed it. That's it gone. My trip to America gone forever. That's it. Blaming each other. They weren't aware of their fortune until they saw in the papers the next day that the Titanic had sank. Okay? But at the time, they're thinking, why is this happening? Right? Another example, real quick, is this. People look at life like a tapestry. On one side of a tapestry, you see it all tangled knots. It's a thread, and you say, what is that supposed to be? But when you turn it over and let's see the other side, you can see the picture. You understand? And you say, wow, but I'm only looking at the tangled mess on the other side. So, yes, we go through this life and we say a tangled mess of things, things that don't look right, things that we don't like or agree with. But we have to trust that, God, you have a purpose in all of this. And lastly, the two greatest examples of suffering in the Bible, one is Joseph in the Old Testament. You would have known the story. He went through hell, our boy. But what was the purpose? He didn't know it at the time. It was only afterward when he was made prime minister of Egypt and he was able to help his own brothers that he says, you see, you planned evil against me, but God actually was planning it for good. And in the cross of Jesus Christ, the suffering of Jesus Christ, why should he suffer? Sure, he's done nothing wrong. And yet God's purpose was that he has to suffer and it has to be for a good work purpose in the end so that he could take the place of sinners and he was taking my place on the cross so that I wouldn't have to face the judgment of God on my own. There's lots of answers there, lots of questions there. But I thank you for your time and stopping, okay? Because it wasn't really shoving anything down on people's throats. I was just trying to have a conversation. Okay? All right, thanks. Well, as bad as all that, right? <laughs>